everyone, welcome to Bandness, the show where I take a look at a piece of art and make an argument as to why somebody would think it'd be a good idea to either alright ban or at least make a good choice. Cut. Today, I'm looking at the infamous anthology comedy film, Movie 43. Now, before I started watching this, I was hoping I had an idea what I was going to say. It was going to be a jokier argument than what I normally do, because I was just... I'm not going to mention it here. Hopefully, I'll come across the film that I'll be able to use that argument for. But, considering this film, it's a little bit better than I thought, which I'll get into later on. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to go with more of the standard arguments I usually do. So this is one of those films where it kind of, you know, tries to push the envelope. So it has an edge to it. So if you are someone who's easily offended, primarily with sexual content, then yeah. This might not be your film. Because that. Because uh, <clears throat> let's, let's, let's look at some of the segments. The first segment, even. Just that. Just looking at the very first true segment. Not the wraparound story, but the real. When we start getting into the meat of the film. That's, uh. Hugh Jackman, he's got scrotum on his chin or on his neck. That's the first segment. The last segment, it's about a perverted cat who has, you know, uh, some sexual feelings for his owner. So it's, it's this kind of film, you know, it's... Something like, you know, South Park, John Waters, Lloyd Kaufman, that kind of thing. You know, it's... This film doesn't strive for taste. So, yeah. It's made to be intentionally offensive. But what do I actually think of this film? Well... It's better than I was expecting. I was expecting something outright terrible, or at least something not funny. And this film isn't great, but this film made me laugh a lot more than like a other comedic anthology films, like uh. The two that come to mind right now is uh, Cracking Up and Seth MacFarlane's Cavalcade of Cartoon Comedy. And Seth does make an appearance in the theatrical cut of this film, which is interesting. He's involved with two terrible, terrible sketch comedy films. I don't know what that means, but... That's just something I thought was interesting to point out. And despite the fact that he's in this film, I'm kind of surprised he has doesn't have his own segment in there that he directed. At least I don't remember. I read the credits to see who all directed something. The only person I'm familiar with is James Gunn. So... This is, this is not Kentucky Fried Movie at all. And one of the biggest faults in this film is that some of the sketches, they don't know when to quit. It's a very simple, sometimes they do very simple jokes, but they don't know when to stop. Because like when I was talking about Hugh Jackman's ball chin that is a perfect example the joke 
the scrotum's here. It's like 10 minutes. It could have worked fine one, two minutes, but it goes on and on and on. How far can we push this very simple, pointless joke? How long can we go before the audience will walk out on us? Kentucky Fried Movie, the, the sketches in there, they're only as long as they need to be. Some of them are only a few seconds. You know, okay, we've exhausted everything we can do for this idea. Let's move on to the next one. Here, the complete opposite, and it suffers immensely for it there are like 50 little things in here like if the managers how much actually have 43 little sketches maybe it'd be a little bit better but then again this film has Seth MacFarlane and cavalcade of cartoon comedy was absolutely atrocious One laugh, same thing with cracking up, one laugh. Here, I got about five laughs. That is a huge difference. This is actually succeeds much more as a comedy than what I was anticipating, but mm, not my thing, man. <clears throat> I don't know if you're a, uh, if you just turned 13 or something, you know, and uh, you have a very bad sense of humor, you might like this film. Well, I've been going on about enough. Not a good film, as I was anticipating, but still much better than I was anticipating. But that doesn't mean much since my expectations were way down here. Normally my expectations are down here, but they were here, which means it just brought back to the neutral area. So I don't really have much of an opinion on this film. Except it's funnier than I thought. But that doesn't mean much. Well, I'll talk to you later. Soon the next one. Oh, and uh, I like the alternate version more than the theatrical version. And I almost kind of wish the wraparound story in the alternate version would have been the entire film. Because it was an interesting idea, but it wasn't the focus. The part I liked most was just something pushed in there. A theatrical version's worse. It doesn't have the interesting wraparound story to help redeem it. The alternate, which is what I watched scene first, it was an interesting idea. They could have turned it into a feature film, I feel like, of him trying to find a movie Two of the characters know it doesn't exist, but one of them doesn't. And then trying to find a film that doesn't exist. It was an interesting idea, but... They put the focus in all the wrong things. All the wrong things. Well, <clears throat> I'll see you in the next one. So take care. And God bless. <sighs> Finally saw movie 43. Oh well. Alright. <coughs> uh, it's almost 10 minutes. Um, can I say anything else in about 5 seconds? Um, yeah. 
No, can't really say much else. All right, yeah, that's it.